Hey everyone, welcome back to part 4 of our deep dive into the amazing world of toy photography. In our previous episodes, we discovered the qualities of light, explored flash versus concert light, and compared the most common lenses for shooting miniatures. But today, we're going to focus on focus. I'll explain the two main methods of making sure your LEGO buddies are sharp all the way through. And to do that, I'll break down this shot from start to finish so you will see exactly how I made sure Darth and his henchmen are crisp from the first to the last man. Oh, and just a quick reminder, I won't hassle you to hit that subscribe button just yet. But if you like what you see, I might give you a little nudge a little later on. Cool? All right, let's do it. Hi everybody, I'm Karsten Lutz and you're watching Platypod TV, brought to you by Platypod, where innovation never sleeps. So fasten your seatbelts and let's dive straight into this week's shot. Ready? All right, let's get into it. So this week we're diving into this awesome shot featuring our Lego buddies Darth Vader and Mando trekking through the forests of Endor with a bunch of stormtroopers hunting down those pesky rebels. Uh, or something like that. But before we get into the nitty gritty of focusing, let's break down the setup first. To create this forest scene, I built a diorama to make our minifigures look like they're actually in that environment full of rich textures and colors. I took a short hike and gathered a bunch of forest materials. In the miniature world, small branches can stand in for tree trunks, especially if they still have bark on them. Small rocks look like giant boulders and pieces of bark can mimic fallen trees in the background. It's all about creating texture. I grabbed some moss from the forest floor, which in a miniature shot looks like alien ferns. To set the scene, I filled a casserole dish with compost and placed my forest materials to create a rugged terrain with an interesting foreground, midground, and background. To add depth, I created a nighttime forest scene in Adobe Firefly, which adds some color and shape to the background, even if it won't be super detailed. The trick is to blend real textures with generated ones to create a sense of realism. Next, I added some moss in the foreground and arranged my minifix on Lego base plates in a V-shape led by Darth Vader himself. I placed this gang of Imperial Marauders in the middle of the set and covered the base plates with compost soil. Now our main actors are fully integrated into the miniature set. For lighting, I went with a simple two-light setup. A loom cube for a hint of backlight and a panel pro LED for the main key light. It's so easy to get them in the right position with the platypod elbows and goosenecks mounted on the Extremo Ultra. And just like that, we're ready to shoot. Okay, let's talk about focusing on small scale stuff. This can be pretty tricky and it mainly comes down to one thing. Depth of field. That's the amount of the scene that's in focus from the nearest to the farthest objects in the frame. To make things look really cinematic, we want a shallow depth of field with a beautifully blurred background, but we also need to make sure our entire gang of minifigs is in focus from Darth leading the pack to Mando at the rear. I'm using a 105 macro lens for this shot, so getting the focus right is crucial. There are two ways to get a good result. Adjusting the aperture and using a technique called focus stacking. Let me break down the pros and cons of both. First up, aperture. Depth of field is mainly controlled by the aperture size and the distance from the subject. The wider your aperture, which means the smaller the f-stop number, and the closer you are to your subject, the shallower the depth of field will be. In miniature photography, since we're usually very close to our subject, we need to increase our depth of field by stopping down the aperture. For example, I can go all the way up to f29. Check out this comparison. At f3.5, only a sliver of Darth is in focus, while his companions are completely blurred. But at f29, the whole gang is acceptably sharp. The downside? Lenses typically don't perform their best at the extreme ends of the aperture range, so the image can be a bit soft. Lenses are sharpest somewhere in the middle, usually around f8 or f11. So how do we get the best out of our lens while still creating a good depth of field? That's where our second technique comes in, focus stacking. This technique is a game changer for getting everything in focus, especially in miniature photography. And here's how it works. Instead of taking one shot, you take multiple shots of the same scene, each with a different focus point. For example, you might start by focusing on Darth in the front and then gradually adjust the focus to cover each minifig all the way to Mando in the back. Once you've got all your shots, you use software like Adobe Photoshop or Helicon Focus to blend them all together. 
The software takes the sharpest parts of each image and combines them into a single photo where everything is in focus. The big advantage here is that you can use a mid-range aperture like f8 or f11 where your lens performs best and still get a crisp detailed shot of your entire scene. It takes a bit more time and effort, but the results are totally worth it, especially if you want a perfect all-in-focus look of your miniature shots. Let me know if you want me to do a full breakdown of how I edit using the focus stacking technique and I'm happy to create an in-depth video for you. Just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'm happy to oblige. Now let's talk about manual focus versus autofocus and why manual focus is usually the way to go for miniature photography. Autofocus can be super handy, but it often struggles with small detailed scenes like our miniature setups. It might end up focusing on the wrong part of the scene, which is obviously not what we want. Manual focus gives you complete control. And here's how you do it. Switch your camera to manual focus mode and use the live view feature. This lets you zoom in on the part of the scene you want to be in focus and fine tune it until it's perfectly sharp. For instance, if you want Darth to be the main focus, you can zoom in on him, adjust the focus until he's crystal clear, and then check the rest of the scene to make sure everything looks good. Using manual focus might take a bit more time, but it is totally worth it. You get to decide exactly what's in focus, which is key for creating those stunning detail shots in miniature photography. Plus, it eliminates the frustration of your camera focusing on the wrong spot. So for those tiny, intricate scenes, manual focus is your best friend. And if your camera has a focus peaking function, it will make the whole process even easier. Focus peaking highlights the areas that are in sharp focus, making it easier to see what parts of your miniature scene are crisp and clear. And here's my final tip. Use a tripod. Locking down your camera is vital to avoid any movement and I highly suggest you set your shutter to a two second delay or use a cable or radio remote. You'll thank me later. And there you have it folks. I hope this video helps you keeping things in focus. Also, I highly recommend you check out my buddy Dave Tiberenreka's latest book, From a Certain Point of View, The Ultimate Guide on Miniature Photography. It really is a pure treasure trove of knowledge from one of the best. Now, if you want to learn more about toy photography, check out my podcast, The Camera Shake Podcast, where I've talked to toy photography pros Dave DeBearmaker and Jesse Fireisen in detail about how they create their amazing images. And if you're not yet following The Camera Shake Podcast, then what are you doing? Check it out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever awesome podcasts live. You'll find all the links in the description. As always, take a snapshot of your setup and share your final shots on Instagram. If you've been experimenting with Platypod gear or try out the lighting setups we've discussed today, I want to see your creations. Make sure you tag Platypod on Instagram and use the hashtag PostMyPlatypod. And if you like this video, we have a button specifically for you right here. Join the community over on Facebook to see what other Platypod users are up to and ring the bell so you don't miss our regular videos. That, my friends, is all for today. Keep shooting, and I'll see you next time.